Okay, so I managed to separate this piece from this piece. <laughs> um, I can see if I can somehow repair this now, this loose piece. It's turning into a real boat project, it's like 2 o'clock. <laughs> Save me all day again. <laughs> dead fish came in today and it's because of the red tide this red tide thing is not good first time I've really experienced him yeah I've heard about it but I've never been anywhere with the red tide Costa Rica, huh? Beautiful Costa Rica, yeah. It's a wee bit hot. Yeah. Kind of a hazy day today, a little bit. And today is our last day here in um, Baja Creek. So that is pretty sad. <laughs> but we really had an incredible time. So I think we're gonna go in uh, after coffee and something big just jumped. <laughs> um, yeah, and then maybe I'll convince Bill to let me do a little bit of the trail. Again, just to kind of say goodbye. Though the incredible hike we did together yesterday was tough, it ended with a visit to a local farm where the owners prepare food for guests with only ingredients grown on the property. We were treated to a fresh sugarcane drink and a color-filled, delicious meal that was a perfect end to a perfect day. Look at that colorful plate. I really just feel so lucky to have found um, such a nice spot um, in Costa Rica like that you can anchor because it's not easy on the west coast here um, and I know that it's just going to get harder as we go up so with some exceptions but yeah I'm just so happy that we found such a great place and it's just been pretty quiet too. Um, because it's still dry season, they do have like tour boats coming in. Um, Cause the only way to get here is by boat really. Um, yeah, so they do have those coming every day, but yeah, just not a lot of cruisers. Um, yeah. Oh, well, this place is, yeah, unbelievable. While I head to shore for the last time, Bill decides it's better that he takes a look at our anchor windlass before we leave tomorrow. The windlass was kind of acting up. It was like it seemed like I had an intermittent connection. It worked when we dropped it, and then when I went to go put the snubber on, it wouldn't work. Um, so I went into the usual troubleshooting, making sure it has power, all that, the remote's working. Um, I opened up the motor casing and I noticed that we have a loose main negative, loose ground on the motor. I'm not sure why. Um, so I'm in the process of tearing it all apart now. Here's the motor. This terminal here is just wiggling where these ones aren't. Um, I'm not sure why there's like physical damage to it. I'm trying to take the motor off the windlass portion. Uh, I just got the last bolt out, so I'm gonna go pull it down now and then see if I can tear apart the motor and somehow fix it. I'm not sure what it looks like inside, but we'll find out. Okay, okay so we have the motor here. Um, gotta try to get inside here and figure out why this piece is loose. That play. There appears to be some like galvanic action here. This end cap does not want to come off. I'm trying to persuade it with a screwdriver and a chisel to get in here. Kind of open it. It's starting to move a little bit. Nothing's ever easy. <laughs> I'm starting to think of like, what can I do? Can I like maybe this still spins? So maybe I could like get a winch and get a line around here and somehow, I don't know, like grind it manually, but I'll see if I get in here first. Bunch of carbon dust here. 
this is my culprit, so I'm gonna start taking a look at this terminal here. Oh, the cap is off now. I don't really know what I'm gonna do. This connection's still okay here. This can see the metal. This is just wiggling. I don't know how to get it in here. It's almost like I have to remove this entire motor section. Okay, so I managed to separate this piece from this piece. <laughs> um, I can see if I can somehow repair this now, this loose piece. It's turning into a real boat project, it's like 2 o'clock. <laughs> Save me all day again. I tighten this cap. I don't think it has anything to do with the problem though. So I'm just testing resistance across this terminal. This is the wire coming in underneath the shield right here. Put that there. So it's like perfect continuity. So I think electrically they're connected. I don't think it has anything to do with my problem. I think it just got loose and it definitely got heated because you can see this is a little bit damaged so there must have been a loose connection at some point. Um, but I was looking at it and I think one of the brushes might have been sticking. These, these are the brushes that make contact with the rotor. Maybe that's a problem? I don't know. So I'm gonna try to put it back together now. Hey, so I got the housing back on. Brushes all appear to be making contact. Meanwhile in town, I'm watching a group of men attempt to load up a pongo with supplies. The coastline here isn't only challenging for cruisers, but for the locals as well. It's hard to believe that this is one of the better beaches for landing on this coast, but that's what we've been told and we'll find out later for ourselves to be true. Before I can make my way home, the sky erupts and the most rain I've ever seen fall at one time begins to dump heavy sheets of water. I'm thinking that we've been lucky to squeeze in a few beautiful days at the tail end of dry season, because if this rain is only the beginning, I can't imagine what this place must be like when rainy season really gets underway. Finally, the rain passes and I get a pickup, headed home. I didn't film it, but I was able to get that windlass back together and everything worked. So I assume it was either a stuck brush or something. Um, but yeah, I, put, I just covered it back up and re-greased everything and uh, made all the connections and it works now. So maybe see a little maintenance, maybe the stuck brush, I'm not sure, but it's working now and that's the key thing. This is freaking phenomenal sunset. We left Baja Drake yesterday evening and made the 100 mile passage overnight to Cedro Island, northward up the Costa Rican coast. It was a motor sail, but an easy, pleasant one. So we're going to check out this island we're on. So they have a prison here um, where they used to keep the worst criminals in Costa Rica. This spot looks real different than Drake. It's pretty arid. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a uh, rainforest yet, I'd say. It's like, yes. kind of like, like a Mediterranean or like some sort of like scrub vegetation, not like big, big lush jungle. Yeah, and One cool Life still. is here too, Gary and Brooke. Yeah, so we're with a lot of friends again. Yeah, Mandela's. Mandela's, so. should be fun. Uh, do a little hikey hike. Good.
What are you guys looking at? Oh my God, that feeling in here is intense. <laughs> Just like, I can't imagine being in prison here on this island. Apparently they kept six um, criminals in a size space, so actually seems like a good size space to me, um, but that's the only good thing about it. <laughs> it is, it is really creepy. <sighs> Heavy atmosphere. cell of all of them with the shitty vine things oh and the bats oh it smells so bad oh yeah amazing how different this place is than Drake. It's cool, it's really pretty, but it's very arid and yeah, just not jungle, wet forest at all. expect you coming up here. She did it all by herself. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Who taught, really yeah, taught you how to do that, Sierra? Hi! You made it! You made it up to the top! Try and get mama. It's 
So there's been these sparrows that keep landing on the boat, like on the spreader, on the radar dome, um, and they've just been chirping all day. And I just noticed that they're, they have been making a nest in our mainsail cover. So right in here, this is our boom. And I heard one, like I heard it, like the bird was like in here. I just looked inside, it flew out. I just looked inside and Besides these cute and industrious little sparrows, there's another thing we've noticed this morning. It's not the first time we've seen it since cruising Costa Rica, but it's the first time we've seen it so pronounced and seen its effects so obviously. It's the red tide created when certain types of algae explode, creating what's called an algal bloom. The harmful bloom is naturally occurring, but as ocean temperatures rise and more fertilizer is carried out to sea and runoff, it's become more frequent. So all these dead fish came in today, and it's because of the red tide. Though the algae releases toxins that can cause skin irritation and respiratory distress in adults, that's not what causes fish and other ocean life to die. These fish have actually died from severe oxygen depletion, thanks to the overabundance of algae. Um, basically it deprives them of oxygen and then they die. Oh, it's starting to smell, it's just it's so sad. It's like far as you can see, just all dead fish. It is worth noting as well that fish and shellfish that do survive can cause severe illness if consumed by humans. Up until now, we've seen masses of red tide while cruising up the coast and occasionally at shoreline, but nothing of this magnitude. The smell of these dead fish is so overwhelming and the rising severity of red tide, a sad phenomenon to witness. fish and you can see the red algae on their gills and they tried to breathe. It's really sad. Yeah, it's not cool. And it's really smelly. It's <laughs> pretty gnarly. Well, we got the resident sparrow trying to make a nest in our boom. Yeah, the sparrow's busy at work and the crazy thing is that like we first, when we first saw these fish, we were like, oh, the pelicans will go nuts, and they don't want anything yeah, to do with Yeah, I think they know fish. better. Like, I mean, there's nothing trying to eat these fish. Poor little fish. This red tide thing is... Not good. First time I've really experienced them. Yeah, I've heard about it, but... I don't think I've ever been anywhere with the red tide. <clears throat> there comes a sparrow. There. Oh, they're nuts. <laughs> I'm not really so happy about that. I know you don't like it. I'm gonna tighten up on them. No! Are you serious? Yeah, I'm gonna move it. It's not nice to them, you know? You really want to be able to get in there? Because we're gonna leave tomorrow. We're not gonna have all that little work's gonna be for nothing. It's okay, it's okay, honey. We just love them. Huh? We just love them. You only love them? <laughs> I don't know. No, it's mean, kind of. I feel bad for them. Like, I don't, I don't want them to work three days and then we take off. <laughs> or I don't want them to put an egg in there or something. I know it is very cool. You're right, actually that would be really sad. Yeah, like, you know, they're working at something trying to create a home, so. You <laughs> <laughs> didn't even get scared. I was just so in my head right in that moment because I was planning on coming in here. <laughs> Sorry for the shitty reaction. 